He is wiped out by His grace through faith in Christ. Your every sin, every sin, past, present, future. Christian hedonist is somebody who says that my greatest joy, my greatest good is God. And therefore, I will pursue that joy and I will pursue that God above all else. So God's glorified and I'm satisfied. You are now listening to the Pastor Discussions Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 63 of the Pastor Discussions Podcast. I'm John. And I am Joe, and this is your weekly conversation on doctrine, faith, and the Christian life. <laughs> Did you open it yet? I haven't opened it yet. So we have sitting in front of us, this came in the mail yesterday, two, two, three days ago. Three two days, days ago. Two days ago. Yeah. We have, courtesy of Crossway. I still can't believe they gave us a free Bible, by the way. <laughs> I just reached out to them. I, <laughs> I, said, I heard they were, okay, so... They have this new preaching Bible that just came out. Like, well, I don't even know if it's available for the public yet. But uh And you have got some deep ties <laughs> to be able to get back. I messaged them. I was like, hey, we have a podcast. I didn't mention that that twelve people listen to it, but uh and you know, uh I, I write a little bit and stuff and so I'm a pastor and I'm curious about your preacher's Bible. Would you mind sending me one and I'll review it? We'll review it. Yeah. And so they did. So this has not been opened yet. I've been waiting for you. So why don't you open it real quick? <laughs> you should be the one opening this. No, You're the no, one no. who has a book you, You're preaching this problem. Sunday. I am. You're preaching nice this Nice leather. Yeah. Nice leather. It's, uh, it's goat actually, skin leather. It's not, um, it's not overly big either. I thought it would be a lot bigger than this. Yeah. It's heavy. It's not. Though. It is pretty heavy. You could knock somebody out with that. Here, you can read their pledge. Oh, okay. What's their pledge? The Bible you hold in your hands was skillfully created using the highest quality materials and expert craftsmanship. This is actually like, this is a true thing because the, uh, the Bible that, uh, was given to me when I was ordained in Missouri is a goatskin ESV, uh, from Crossway. And that thing is fantastic. I love it. So I also have one of those too. Yeah. Which was given to me. It was given by to you. you. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to play with this over the next uh, week or so. And check it out. And then what we'll do is we will uh, do a show next week uh, reviewing it and letting you all know what we think about it, or at least for part of the show. And, uh, yeah, thank you, to, thank you to Crossway for sending that to us. We appreciate it. All right, I'm going to let John look at this. I'm going to looking forward to – I'm looking forward to checking it out. Let me hold it. Oh. It's nice. I like the goat skin. Yeah. The, the supple, supple – how does it smell? It smells new. Oh, that smells fantastic. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's so like one of my You got to remember that John was a goat farmer. He likes how goats smell. So. <laughs> this smells much better than any live goat I have ever smelled in my life. All right. So that's enough of that. Uh, we have had, let's see, it's been it's been three weeks since we were together recording. It's, it feels like it's been a really it long does. time. Uh, so in that three weeks, a lot has happened. So we figured today for our show, we would talk about these things that have happened in our lives. So why don't you start? <laughs> I think, why? Because yours, yours is much bigger than mine. And if we end up just talking about yours, that's fine with me. <laughs> everybody knows that I went to Mongolia. That is, that is true. So not, we, we, not we everybody knows like what's going on with you. So, so uh, let's see. Yeah, life's been a whirlwind. Um. So you left for Mongolia at the uh, the thir last Thursday in February. Yeah, last Thursday in February. No, the twenty second. The twenty second. Okay, yeah. so so you left that day. Um, so that weekend, uh, we were supposed to have a guest uh, preacher. One of the um, one of the missionaries we support our missionary church planter is, is a church planter from it's a mission. City. It's a mission effort. And uh, we had we've had really crappy weather here. Horrible. Yeah. Like I saw something that every weekend. Yeah, too. I know. I've seen something that it's been like snowing and crummy or the first snow, first snow here in Nebraska was 147 days ago. Yeah. So it's been perpetual winter here. So it's like Narnia, <laughs> except we had Christmas. Yeah. So, um, he couldn't make it. Um, and so I had to scramble up and so I got a sermon ready for that morning. So I led music and, uh, did, and did that sermon. One man show. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're doing that. Tomorrow too, since we're recording on Saturday, but, um, uh, I'll help though. You, you are going to help, <laughs> which is actually, the, you, you're, you're very helpful. So thank you for that. 
Um, so I, I preached on Psalm 139, which uh, the reason I say that is because um, the thing that happened, actually, the the fact that I had to prepare a sermon and it was Psalm 139 was yeah. very helpful um, when I walked through. So give me, a, give me a quick synopsis of Psalm 139. So I went through just the 12, first 12 verses of mm-hmm. it. And we looked in depth at the um, just those two attributes of God's uh, omniscience and omnipresence, mm-hmm. and um, how when we really um, look at those attributes and we marvel at them, and we really grasp what they are. Like I, I see in that um, that David is actually kind of scared of those attributes and tries to run away from those things. Mm-hmm. And then when he comes back in full circle, um, it gives him peace. Yeah like knowing that God knows him so well and that he's always with him uh, gives him this large amount of peace. So that was kind of just a a glimpse of that one. And then uh, I was supposed to preach the next uh, week in um, the 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 second Sunday that I was gone. Right. Uh, And I was going to do Psalm 16, which I'm going to do tomorrow now. Um, So I I had that all ready. And then on Thursday... Um, I went home like around five, like I normally do and, uh, sat down and had dinner with, uh, the family and we were sitting at the table and our son, Ian, who's 20 months old, sits on the end in his little booster seat. And, um, I was sitting on his, on his right side and I was looking at him and there was something weird, uh, going on with his eye. I couldn't figure out what it was. I just figured it was a reflection, Mm -hmm. uh, just light coming off his eye weird. So we got done with dinner and he got down and uh, he started running around and we've got a, our kitchen and a, a bar and there's a wall there. So he gets, makes a circle. So he likes to run around in circles. So, yeah. so what, he's, what little boy doesn't. Yeah. So he's running around and we've got uh, lights that shine down through the walkway between our couch and the bar. And he's coming down that and I catch um, his eye every time he walks under a light and I'm just looking at it. It looks really weird. And so I stop him. I get down on his level and I like pick him, like pick him up a little bit and look at his eyes, and one of them the, in the pupils you can kind of see through. Yeah, like not kind of you could see through. Yeah. It looked like you were looking at the back of of his eyeball because you could see white and and see veins and stuff. And so I like I like Michaela something's wrong with the with his eye. And so I take him over and she. She's like, oh, my gosh, there's something wrong with his eyes. We have to go right now. That's like, I was, I was like, okay, okay, okay. Because she, I mean, she, she's a little, she, I mean, she gets like. She's motherly. Mom. She's, mom, she's yeah, a mom. Moms so, do that. So I was like, okay. I, Dads I, I'll, are like, ah, you're fine. I'll hang on to the girls. You, ta- you take him. And so she ran over to urgent care and we had worship practice. So I went to worship practice with the mm-hmm. girls. And This was on Sunday? This was, was on, on Thursday. Thursday, Thursday yeah. okay. Um, so uh, we, it's been nine days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, she takes him over to urgent care and, um, they actually came out. She asked him, I don't even know if this is something you guys can take care of. And so they looked at him and said, no, you need to take him to the ER. There's something going on there. So she called me and I left practice, dropped the girls off and go over there. Um, Ian wound up getting a CT scan, um, and they saw something behind his eye that looked, um, abnormal. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so we got reference to Children's Hospital, which is in Omaha, and then they bypassed us to the University of Iowa. Did you even go to Omaha to see them? We didn't. Really? Um, so they just, like, sent the scans. They were like, hey, go so to— So the, the two—it do- was really crazy. The two doctors who had seen—so you had the radiologist who saw the scan and mm-hmm. said they need to go. Um, and then the ophthalmologist there at— uh, Children's. Children's Hospital talked with the ophthalmologist at the University of Iowa, and they looked at the scans and said, "Let's just let's just get him over there." Yeah. So we got to Iowa. Um, we had to leave on Friday. Uh, we drove six hours, um, stayed the night, and got up really early. Uh, and Ian had an MRI and a thorough exam. We found out he had a retinoblastoma, which is a form of cancer, and it was in the eye. He had a tumor in his eye. That was mm-hmm. what we were seeing. And it had gotten big enough to where did it destroy the pupil? Um, I don't know if it destroyed the pupil, but it 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 basically killed the eye. Gotcha. So he couldn't see out of it anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and then so we found out that that happened, and uh, he had to have surgery to remove his eye. Uh, and so they did that on they Monday. did that on Monday. Yeah. So from Thursday till Monday, we went. To our kid has cancer, and now he doesn't have an eye. 
Um, pathology report came back and and his it's looking like he's cancer free. We'll have to wait for one more. Yeah. Um, which we'll get in about three weeks from now. So, so yeah, that's kind of what's been going on. And we can't, we got back <laughs> so here. Yeah, that's it. We <laughs> got back here on Tuesday, and uh, I took Wednesday off, and then came back uh, to work, and I'm gonna preach tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what's been going just, on. Just full disclosure, Joe is preaching tomorrow because he wants to preach tomorrow, not because <laughs> I'm an insensitive jerk. No, it's no, like, no. Hey, you already prepared this sermon. Go ahead and preach it anyway. <laughs> no, I was actually. Um, it actually might be good too. Like, uh, I think maybe I won't say why why it's good. It'll it'll be good. Okay, so I'll, you, I'll, I'll tell you afterwards. Seats are free, but you only need the edge. <laughs> you keeping me keeping me on the edge of my seat here. And I got to pay attention during the sermon, man. No, no, I won't tell. I'll, I'll tell you when we're talking. Okay. Why, okay. So. Anyway. Yeah, all right. So, uh, yeah. So this whole time I'm getting text updates in Mongolia. So we were, when we were, we were out. Uh, I didn't I, know you didn't, you, um, you didn't have voice signal out there. Like you couldn't. Well, I could, but it was. Oh like no, it was really expensive. Cents yeah, a minute. That's right. And the, well, the problem was, uh, basically I was running everything off of, uh, Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi was incredibly unreliable. I okay, got yeah, and the signal was absolutely horrible. So I don't even know if voice calls would have gone uh, through where we were at. But so I'm getting these text updates and sort of like tracking this whole thing from another continent, which that I mean it it's nothing compared to what you guys went. But it it like it sucked. Yeah, like because I mean I love you guys and um I love Ian. It was just really hard as a pastor. To not be there because there was somebody else in our congregation that lost their brother. And um, I had to be content with sending an email that said, Hey, I'm sorry, I can't, yeah. can't call or anything, which I kind of, that just, that really stunk. But um, yeah, so I was following these text updates and stuff. And like uh, when he was, when he was in surgery, it was like two in the morning over there, over there. Okay. And so I was like, I kept on waking up, like checking my phone, seeing how everything went. So I was incredibly relieved when everything went really well. And the doc said that they thought they got everything. Yeah. So, so what have you learned from this? What, what are some things that, um, this, this massive sort of like life changing experience that happened in your family? Um, you walk through this as a dad, as a husband, right. as a pastor. Uh, what are, what are some things that, that God taught you through this or that you learned walking through this? So I would, there's a couple of things that stand out. I mean, there's a lot of things to when you step back and think about right. everything that happened to take away, but there, there are a couple of things that I think really stand out. So I am a person who likes to, uh, in my mind, work through everything, uh, in life, worst case scenario, like try to prepare for that thing. Right. right yeah. So you and Carly, <laughs> 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 so like, okay, uh, would I be able to handle if my wife passed away or if one of my kids passed away? Like, like I think through things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but there is no comparing, uh, when you actually have to yeah. face the reality that, um, which obviously Ian, Ian didn't die and, uh, everything looks good. But the reality on Friday and Saturday is that, that they were rushing us because, they saw a large, um, in the CT scan, they saw a large abnorm abnormality. Yeah. So they knew the tumor was pretty big because it had a calcium buildup on it, and that's what really? they had seen. Hmm. Um, so, th so was he, do they think he was born with it? Um, the uh, ophthalmologist that we talked to said it's a possibility that really? um, he was born with it, but it's so weird. It, it grew so fast. Yeah. Uh, like in a short amount of time. So this because, was like a really aggressive cancer then. Right. Had it not been identified, that would have been just like, it would have expanded it, beyond the eye. Yeah, it quickly. Got, and actually would have caused him a lot of pain because um, they said the the tumor actually had, got, had grown so big that it was starting to put pressure on mm. his eye. Yeah. Um, so when you, I you go through all those things in your mind, all those uh, worst case scenarios, but then you actually have to walk through it. And we talk a lot about... Um, I think you said this um, from a sermon, like if I have all the greatest things um, that I've ever been given in my life when I'm in heaven and God's not there, is it still heaven? And we all mm -hmm. intellectually would say yes. Um, and then we say, okay, take all the greatest things away, but I have God in heaven. Is that enough? And all of us intellectually would say yes. Mm -hmm. um, you mean no and yes. If I have everything I want and God's not there. 
Is it still heaven? No. Right. No. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we would say. I just right. want to clarify that. Yes. 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 Okay. Did I say? I said. I'm not, I'm not spouting heresy yeah. from the pulpit that yeah, I'm aware of. Yeah. No. <laughs> so you say no. It. God. We have to have God. Yeah. Um. But if if God's there and all the things that we love in our life are gone, we would say yes. We'd still heaven because we have God. So intellectually, we get that. Right. But affectionately, um, like from an emotional standpoint, from uh, the gifts that we've been given, which are children and our wives and all the things in life, those are gifts from our, from our good God. And so to have to sit with the reality that, that your kid could be taken away from you, mm-hmm. um, you find out a lot about where your faith is yeah. and about where your trust is. Uh, I remember I was sitting on a Friday night uh, when we got to, we got to the hotel really late because we didn't get um, the call from Iowa till about two in the afternoon. So it was 11 o'clock and um, Kayla was taking a shower. I was just holding Ian because he was not going to sleep. And um, I was just thinking and praying. And all I could say was, don't take my son away. Don't take my son away. Mm-hmm. Um, and after I didn't like did that for about three minutes, um, I went into, okay, if you are, but if you do give me the strength and the grace that I need to be able to handle it as a dad, to yeah. be able to handle it as a husband and to be able to handle it as a pastor. Yeah. Um, and I actually was, even though Friday night and Saturday morning were probably the hardest time of the, of the entire process for me, like I, there was a, there was a, a sense of confidence that no matter what God was still working Mm-hmm. He still had a plan, and if we were going to have him, um, great. But if it was his time and God was going to take him, then I felt like I would be able to handle it. That God would give me the grace that I would need yeah. to be able to walk through that. And until you, I don't know that, like that's something you think you know and you think is real, but then when you have to walk through something like that, then what you thought you knew you know that yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so, so I think just that God is really my greatest treasure and I am really trusting him um, with all the things in life and that although I've highly, highly, highly value my children and my wife and my family and my friends, I think I can say with more confidence now that God really is my, my greatest treasure. Yeah. Um, so being able to walk through that and see how God ha- is 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 going to sustain me no matter what, um, just great gives me greater confidence in Him that He is who He says He is and He is for my good. Yeah. Um. So just there's a greater amount of trust. Um. There's less anxiety. I think that. I mean, I'm not really a worried person anyway, but like even like you go into it and you think you know. And like I said, now just there's there's a different type of confidence. Now. It's an experiential, yeah, aspect to it. So from that aspect, um, for personally, and then helping to communicate, I think some of these things with um, helping my wife or helping my kids to help them understand, um, I think has been helpful. And I, for just from a pastoral standpoint, um, having one more thing that I've walked through where I can maybe relate a little bit better and help people walk through that themselves yeah. and, uh, put their, uh, put their, their trust in hard situations. It's got in God. It's easy to put, to trust him when things are going well mm-hmm. and things are going good. It's a lot harder to, when you, um, when you aren't. And then one other thing, like the, the, the texts that I had been studying through and that I had been preparing for were, Psalm 139 and Psalm 16. And I can't think, like, it is so, so evident to me that God was getting me ready yeah, for for those four or five days by having me work through those texts because, like, God is here, he's with me, and I have confidence, I can have peace, that he knows how I feel and what I need. And then um, in Psalm 16, which... I'm really excited to preach tomorrow. Yeah. I, I don't know that I've been, I've always, I always really enjoy preaching, but this one, this text is like you and I have been talking about tr- uh, treasuring and trusting a lot. Yeah. And I don't know that people are, are like, I think they're starting to get it, but this like really puts it out on paper, what it looks like. Yeah. Um, and 
I had to do exactly what David does in that song mm-hmm. um, to be able to trust God yeah. um, and to see him as my, my greater uh, good and my, my supreme treasure. I had to sit there and like he doesn't say, he just says help at the beginning and then he preaches to his soul about who God is. And that gives him the confidence that God is who he says he is. Yeah. Um, so just having to walk through that process on my own, like in a personal trial versus just preaching it, it makes the, I don't know, the text is just so alive now to yeah. me. And I can just see how God was getting me ready. He wasn't leaving me to my own devices and my own way of trying to deal with it. But yeah. he was he was there. He knew what I would need to be ready. And he, you will not he abandon my soul to shield. It, it, it you was, will leave your holy one for corruption. So it was, it was, a, it was, I think I, I think I told you this. It's the hardest thing I've ever gone through as probably ever. Yeah. Um, like I've had family members die, but not, not a kid. Um, we, we've walked through one miscarriage, but there's, there's just something different because you know, this child, um, you've raised it. Yeah. Uh, raised him. And, uh, so to, yeah, I don't know, just to walk through that, um, as a parent, the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but also one of the most fruitful things that's ever happened. Yeah. Um, because I can, I can see how God has been working and working in me to flesh out some of the, uh, some of the bad habits of relying on myself Mm -hmm. that I have. Um, and working on some sin issues in with me in this trial, um, like that, it's producing that character and producing hope. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm allowed to do this. We'll edit it out if I can't. But uh, we were texting when I was in Mongolia, and you said uh, trials uh, really produce steadfastness when your feet are on the rock, and it's all Him, not me. And I responded, "Yep, it's a different thing seeing it in the Bible and affirming it versus living it and experiencing it." God, uh, experiencing God's sovereign hand and how he orchestrates things and sustains us in them to teach us of his power and control and character. So we will rest more in him is different than just seeing it. Yeah. Um, and that's when you said this has been the hardest couple of days of my life, but most fruitful actually seeing all the work has been done on me has led, uh, to a rock solid trust of him when things seem horrible. Right. And it's like, I think I've said this before, the time to figure out what you believe about God and what you believe about his character and what you believe about his attributes and um, even those, those things that can be contentious um, that, that seem to, to be hot button topics. Um, the time to figure out when you're going through them is not uh, when you're in difficulty. Yeah. It's before because you rest in that. That's what you have to preach to yourself. That's what you have to go back to. That's what you fall back on. Um, there's a, so a couple of things as you were talking about that, really what you were talking about is future grace. Right. Um, God gives us the grace that we need when we need it, not before, not after. He He gives us the grace we need to walk through what we need to walk through when we're walking through it. And that requires that I trust him to exactly. give me that grace. And exactly. That, that I think is one of the bigger things that I've, that I've walked away, walked, well, not walked away because we're still in it, but, <laughs> but have seen in this is that, that he will give me the grace that I need in the time that I need it. Like, but that, that doesn't mean that I get it all the time. Yeah. That doesn't mean that I get more so I can have enough to sustain myself. Yeah. Like I still have to rely on him. I still have to trust him. Yeah. And so like, I think God gave me that grace by having me work through those texts. Yeah. Um, those two specific texts. Cause I mean, that's all I was doing. I was, as we were driving there and preaching to myself, these, these texts as they, they run through my mind. I mean, you, you know, how preaching is you're just saturated in a text and you're yeah. thinking through it and, and you're, you're putting all the pieces together in your mind. And I for, don't get very often get to do that two weeks in a row. And I was, so I still had 139 cause it ties into 16 a little mm-hmm. bit. And then I had 16 and I got those sections and I'm just thinking through verses one through six and how I just need to treasure God. I need to tell myself about what I know to be true about him. Yeah. And that is what allows me to trust him. And that's, that's the means of grace that he, 
bestowed on me so i would trust him even so we've been in a psalm series yeah um and so we've preached psalm 42 psalm 46 psalm 51 um before i left and in psalm 42 he preaches to his soul yeah even in that like seeing even that god knew and i like this this truth be told this psalm series was was your idea um and it like this is just sort of highlighted to me how god uh, God is sovereignly orchestrating the things that we need to hear when we need to hear them to prepare us. We might need to be prepared months in advance, years yeah. in advance, or, or sometimes weeks in advance. And so the, uh, the gathering of God's people, the preaching of God's word, the, the perpetual singing of praises together to one another is an important part of how God works in our lives to prepare us for things. Yeah. Um, even in just remind, reminding us of songs that we sing to ourselves as we're walking through difficulties. Um, so how did you like uh, talk about like how you navigated this as a, as like a husband and father? Like, what was that like? Well, as a husband, I don't think I did great. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe it's, maybe it was good. Maybe it wasn't. I, I would guess this was more harsh than it probably should have been, but I was like, we don't even know anything yet. And we're, I, t- I told her. Every time I say that, it turns out to be something bad. Yeah. That's so, the thing. Like I've learned this. I I've done that exact same thing. <laughs> I did that with Carly's mom when she was going through. Right. Like when she was oh, and then it turned out to be something And then it turned really out bad. to be cancer. And <laughs> like, oh my gosh, come on. So I, um, I remember the, the thing I said. I was like, you are letting your fear of tomorrow steal your joy today. Mm. Um, so and that was good. And I, and I said that to both cause, uh, her, her mom was there and she was there and, and they were both, I mean, and I get it. They were comforting each other. They're, they're worried. Um, and so, and I was preaching that to myself too. I was like, yeah. I'm not going to let the things that we could find out tomorrow or the next day or next week, steal the joy that I have. Um, that, that this gift that God has given me, he's given me this little boy who I love who is dear to me, but he, he's a gift to us yeah. and I want to enjoy him for however long right. I get to have him. Um, that was a lot harder for me to say on Friday night <laughs> and Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, but I would say, I, I think the things I, I, Michaela and I talked in the way she had a, a panic attack on the way there on Friday night too, while we were driving. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, she we got close to stopping and going to a hospital because she was having chest pains and, and she just needed to calm down. And she, she eventually did. Um, so I, w- I was praying for her. Um, I didn't, didn't say anything. Uh, That's probably wise. I, I think that was actually, yeah, that, was uh, that was God's grace too, <laughs> that I didn't get on her for, um, when she told me she was having all these things, I just didn't say anything. Cause normally I'd be like, you're just freaking out for no reason. Just calm down. That doesn't normally help. It doesn't uh, normally it so, helps me. Yeah. <laughs> it does not help my wife. <laughs> I think uh, normally I have a hard time being um, not authentic, but just like, like I suppress certain things in those type of situations. Yeah. Um, and on Saturday morning when he had gone uh, to get the MRI, he went under sedation to do it. Mm-hmm. We were in the waiting room. Um, I was able to be uh, more vulnerable with her. Um, prayed for us out mm-hmm. loud, um, and just what just an honest prayer, uh, kind of the same things I've been praying um through before. Um, we stopped at a so I, there was a small things that as I've looked back on, we were gonna stay at this place that was um free, uh, but we got there and it was really really gross, <laughs> and it had a. <laughs> It just had a really bad feeling like you could tell that it was for the cancer patients, but a lot of people were there to watch their children die or, yeah. or, or in the last days of, of, I mean, their kids' lives. So yeah. um, it was hard to be there. And I could, I could tell, I mean, I think Michaela could tell I didn't want to be there, but I could tell that she didn't want to. And she just needed somebody to say, let's not stay. Yeah. So um, I told her it was okay that we'd go and we have, we've got enough money it'll work itself out and so i like 
deciding not to stay there and going somewhere where we would be comfortable and it would have a better feeling. Um, those were things I think that were helpful. Yeah. Um, deciding to head back to uh, see her sister and brother-in-law for on Sunday instead of just staying in the hospital, I think yeah. were decisions that as I, cause I prayed about those things like, should we, or should we just stay and just enjoy our time with him? Or should yeah. we like, those were good things. I think that, um, I helped lead through that. I probably wouldn't have done two or three years ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the, the prayer and just the not, I think not coming down on her for her worry Yeah. and for being a mom and just having a hard time. Um, I think were things that God specifically gave me grace not to do, especially <laughs> on like Thursday and, yeah. And even Saturday after we found out what it was and they saw everything that was good, um, like still struggling. So, so I think, I think those are some ways that I led through that. And then, uh, as far as with our girls, like just calming them down, uh, helping them understand, uh, I tend to be, I tend to be short, um, especially sometimes with our kids, especially when I'm tired and I was able like, we will FaceTime them on Saturday and, mm-hmm. I told them they were going to take his eye and they, you know, they're girls too. So they, they got all, all worried. And I was like, he hasn't seen out of it anyway. And yeah. eventually they'll prosthetic will go in and it'll be like, he's like, he's new. So, so I think God just gave me a lot of patience in, mm-hmm. uh, as a husband and, um, and then just again, off, give me some opportunities to be, um, there with my wife in the same place emotionally um, and then help lead us together through that. So. Yeah, that's good. Man, crazy week. Yeah. Yes, no joke. So I'm so grateful too, man. Like the way it's crazy, like our podcast. Um, so there's people that I don't know who have messaged me. Hmm. I'm like, I don't know. How do you have asked? How do you know me? I was like, well, I, we listen to you on the podcast. Like, those people, there's people in Converge that have reached out. Um, that's, that's, part, our that's our denomination that I don't really it's know. Not a, it's, not a, but they, it's not a cult. <laughs> right. It's not, yeah. Um, and then our, our church has been awesome. Um, the family's been really supportive and awesome. So it's just been overwhelming and humbling to accept people's gifts. And, and that's hard for you. Yeah. I know that's hard for you. Yeah. So it was... Uh, Somebody uh, texted me on on Saturday and and, and asked if it'd be okay if someone uh, paid for a hotel and I I I bugged him a little bit as long as I was like as long as it's not you I'm okay with it. <laughs> uh, but eventually eventually I gave in like I was just um, yeah it's just overwhelming to sometimes I think in the you get in the rhythm of pastoral ministry and you I mean you just tend to whether it's it's legitimate and fair or not, you tend to hold on to all the critiques yeah. and all the negativity. And so that can kind of jade you towards um, people mm-hmm. um, and just to see them respond and, and love us the way they, that um, our local church body has, has been, has been uh, humbling and eye opening, and uh, yeah, just gives me probably a, like a, Kind of a spiritual spanking too. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> like it's amazing how much sin God deals with in you as it, as you you're walking through trials yeah. and how much of that comes out. So yeah, well, and it, I think it it highlights it highlights something significant. Like we all realize that. So so two things. Like I, I was thinking about as you were talking about that. Number one is uh, pastors in churches. This seems very self-serving because we are pastors, but pastors in churches need to be ministered to. Yeah. They're part of the body as well. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's kind of like, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, okay, there's a huge need. Let's, let's meet that need. But there are, there are other, you know, we need to, we need to care for those that are caring for us. And, and I'm even among us as, as pastors on a pastoral council, we need to care for one another and minister to one another. Um, cause we are part of the body and we do have, yeah. we do have needs. We need the body. Like, I guess that's sort of like the, the yeah. ground floor yeah. reality is like, we need the church. We are not just like hirelings for the church, but right. we need to be part of the church and we need the ministry of the church as well. The, the second thing is, um, we, we had, uh, 
I'm kind of the same way with accepting help. It's like this pride rears up. And, <laughs> yeah. And who are you? No, I'm I, don't, I don't need I'm your fine. help. I'm fine. I'll figure it out. Uh, but somebody told me once that you're denying other people the blessing of, yeah. of serving. You. I think you've told me that too. And that's what ran through my mind. And I finally <laughs> was like, okay, I've, I've got to be okay with this and let somebody else well, and minister to me. Well, and that's, I, you know, when I was in Missouri, I preached through uh, Ephesians chapter four ministering. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, given pastors, prophets, evangelists to equip the saints to do the work of ministry. Um, and that, that work of ministry includes, us yeah um so as equippers we we need ministry as well and so it's it's allowing others to participate in ministry in a in a meaningful way yeah so yeah that's that's uh one other thing i would say too um as a pastor i don't the last thing i think i needed was to be pastored um i just needed friends to come alongside me like godly friends to remind me of some of the truths and not you know how there's a sometimes as pastors go in with, with people who are hurting or in pain yeah. and, and we pastor them. Yeah. Right. And I told Mikhail, I was so appreciative of no one. Like I've got, I've got uh, four other pastors that, that pastor alongside me yeah. that could have pastored me. And instead they supported me and they fed me truth, but they didn't, I never felt like I was being a uh, pastor. Cause, and I, I don't, I don't really think I needed that. I just needed maybe some simple reminders or something. We're praying for you. Uh, so you're just crummy pastors. You're just, <laughs> you needed crummy pastoral care. <laughs> no, I, I, I got it. I think like it was. No, I, I think what you're saying is you got the pastoral care that you needed. Right. You didn't get like, and I think that that is a, that's a, that's a very important observation for people that are in pastoral ministry. Uh, exactly. You need to know your sheep. Um, because I, I know you, I knew Basically, if I like, even even like uh, the Saturday uh, when they took Ian in to yeah. do the surgery, I was gonna Facetime you, um, and and pray with you guys. And you said, hey, you know, you don't need to, you don't need to Facetime me. You know, we're we're just we're sitting down for lunch. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Like, um, I know you. I know that we've got a good enough relationship where if you need something, you'll, you'll tell me something or I'll be able to tell and beat it out of you. But, <laughs> um, but knowing the sheep, knowing what sheep need when they need it, because I think you can actually be destructive yeah. by going in and, and just pushing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think that's a, that's a good lesson for, for pastors. So um, I was really, cause I think it, it, it's that. a good motive. Like you want to be right. there. You want a, uh, it, it's like, it's painful to see people go through things and you care about them. You love them. You want to, help them. You, you want them to, um, delight in God through the midst yeah, of that. Right. You want to encourage them, but sometimes it's just more detrimental than helpful in the timing and what you say. Right. Um, so yeah. And the fact that there's nothing to say. Yeah. A that's lot of exactly times in, yeah. in, in, in what a am situation I gonna tell you? like that, your kid's got cancer. Hey, he's going to lose his eye and we hope the cancer hasn't spread to his brain. Otherwise, He's, you're basically shot. Yeah, what you need there is you need people praying for you. Right. You need relationships and and people loving you, not and that's what we preaching had. to you. And sometimes, like I think, like everything that's happened, like there's so many things. It reminded me of the people that love us. They really do love us. It's not just a a thing that they're doing for their own gain. Like this body, whatever. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So. <laughs> <laughs> This Went body, on that one, right. <laughs> and the people here really do care. Like they care about us, and so it's, it's just been a like I said, really hard and just really fruitful at the same time. So that's good, man. I'm glad Ian's okay. Me too. He's yeah. he's kind of back to himself too. He's a little bit whiny today, but the the girls being around helps. He yeah, likes to play. So, yep. So just be. We've got a few more hurdles to get over. Um, Hopefully it's, there's two types of cancer. There's a, a random one that just happens yeah. uh, when cells mutate and they do something they're not supposed to do. And then there's a genetic one. And so we're hoping for the random one because the genetic one, then we have to be really vigilant because it can wind up popping up in his other eye. And mm. so do the, uh, the girls are clear. Uh, we don't know. I mean, like if it's a genetic thing, does that mean that is it like an X linked thing where it's only it could be? It could boys? be. Um, no, it could be. Um, 
in either Michaela or I, and our girls could be carriers of it too if it's genetic right. too. So they're actually going to go with us, um, I think, at, at the one month, and they're going to have their eyes looked at. And yeah. So because they said we should check that. So. Yeah, that's good. God's faithful. It's, you never want to – it was uh, Piper, my go-to. Um, <laughs> no one ever experiences their deepest, most lasting – Fellowship with God on a primrose path of ease. It's always in the in midst it's, of suffering. And you don't get that until, until like, you walk it, through it. Until you walk through it. Yeah. So, and I've, like I said, I've walked through some hard stuff, but not like that. Yeah. And so. Is it, it was, it was really interesting, uh, to sit back and watch from a distance, well, from a different continent, but, um, uh, like to see, like, cause I've, I've known you for what, five years now, six years, something like that. And, uh, to see how God has grown you over that time and see how like your reaction and your response and the way you guys handled that and, and where your trust was and, and all of those different things would have been so different five years ago. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's just, it's, it's encouraged me that, uh, God's word does work and, he does change his people and yeah. he changes us slowly it's and so, sometimes it's, painfully slowly, but he, he works he, in us. It's pretty crazy. Like I, I really haven't thought about it from that large of a perspective. That's what I do big picture. I know. But, <laughs> that's one thing I do. But that, but that's really true. Like he does mold us. It, we don't see it yeah. because it You're happens over it. a long amount of time. Um, like I can, I can definitely see the last three weeks. Yeah. Um, but that's a good, that's a good point too. Like there's, there's no way. I, don't, I, I mean, I'm sure I would have been able to get through it at some point cause God yeah. would give me the grace I needed then, but maybe I didn't need as much this time. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I think it was just, you were more prepared to prepared to deal with it in a healthy way, in yeah. a way that glorifies God and points to his worth and his value and, and, uh, and tr- that trust in him. Yeah. Versus trusting in whatever doctors yourself, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a, when, when Carly's mom passed away, it was really interesting to watch her walk through that. Um, and see the, there's been a lot of transformation in her understanding of God and her, uh, experience of God, uh, over the years that we've been married, mostly at my hand because I was a jerk the first <laughs> four years we were married. Uh, but even afterwards, as I was going through seminary and, and discovering new truths in God's word and seeing new things and the people that God surrounded us with and everything, and to see the like sadness or sorrowful without always rejoicing. Yeah. That, that sort of Pauline paradox. Yeah. Um, to see her experience that when her mom passed away and in the, the months after, even now still, um, it, it's an amazing gift to be able to walk through that with somebody and see their faith encourage you and strengthen you. See God use them to, mm-hmm. to bless you. And so um, it, it sort of speaks to the importance of those relationships yeah. within the body too. So this week was also the, um, Mike, uh, Michaela's dad died. Um, six oh, is this or the seven anniversary? Years, yeah, it oh. was on Wednesday. So it just reminded me, it's, it, it, even in my wife, seeing her deal with this versus how she yeah. dealt with that. Not the same thing, but um, also very different. Yeah. Um, so it, it's cool to see how we grow and uh, how God prepares us for the things he has for us. Yep. So. Yeah, he, we, uh, so we'll, we'll talk about Mongolia next week. Okay. Uh, I anticipated this would happen because I, I think this is, a, this is a great conversation to have. But I'll just say uh, there was a, a, one of the students in Mongolia really struggled with the idea of suffering. Um, and... I walk them through a bunch of passages in scripture that deal with suffering Mm -hmm. and um, really encourage them to, to think on those and marinate on those before we get an attitude of God is mean or impotent because we are suffering uh, because those, those trials are overseen by God and they're designed by God to do things for us. Yeah. Um, They produce hope. They produce joy they produce trust and treasuring god above everything else in a way that the easy 
That's why it's so important to know exactly. the God of Scripture too, exactly. and not just the God that people tell you about or the God of we you, make up you make up in your own mind. Yeah, who would never allow you to go through anything hard. Yeah, um, it's not who God reveals Himself to be, but He does reveal that He's working all those things yep. for your good. Yeah. Um. So do you? Are you going to trust him? Do you really trust him? And uh, Which is what we're talking about in Sunday school tomorrow. And in the sermon tomorrow. And in the sermon so tomorrow. They're so. going to get a double whammy of it. Kapow, kapow. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, all right. So here's what we're going to do. Next week, we'll do a, a review of this this Bible here. And then uh, we'll talk about Mongolia a little bit. So just, uh, just a, like a first reaction off that, I'm disappointed in it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm withholding all comment okay. until I've had a chance to like, I, I've, and I've just now, looked at, I just looked I know, at a few pages. I, and there's, so. there's is just, I, I'm amazed that they would do that because if I was the publisher, I would never do that because you're just open, like open your, yeah, yourself up every pastor has things that they want in their perfect <laughs> preaching Bible and no Bible is going to have all of them. So, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll check that out. We'll, we'll look at it this week and we'll go through it a little bit this week and then, We'll talk pros and cons of this awesome. next week. And then uh, until then, go check out uh, resurrectioncoffeeco.com. Get some Resurrection Coffee. We are part of the Bar Podcast Network, and they have a new podcast, uh, yeah. Truth and Fire. So be sure to go check that out. You can go to thebarpodcast.com and check them out. Also, I think I might be getting off of all groups on Facebook because <laughs> that is really challenging any semblance of godliness in my life. Um, I don't think you're the only one. I struggle with that. Maybe we'll talk. That's going to be another episode. We'll talk about that too. Uh, but you can find us on <laughs> our Facebook. Group, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our group's not like that. Our group, uh, our group is. Yeah. Uh, but you can go to uh, Facebook and check out pastor discussions podcast. Like us. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for all of your prayers and encouragement and support. And uh, it's just, it's, it, I, I'm sure it's been really meaningful to your family. It has um, been, yeah. But having, having people that we don't even know <laughs> reach out or, or shoot us a message and letting us know how uh, this two idiots sitting here yeah. talking for 45, 50 minutes is encouraging to you or helping you. And we're, we're just glad God's using it. And we're thankful that you guys listen. And so please hit us up. Let us know maybe some show ideas. Chris Hughes, we have not forgotten about your show ideas. They are coming up. Um, And uh, yeah, man. I haven't talked to you about this, but I want to do like a, we'll do a listeners uh, interviews. Yeah, I know. We'll line up a few people who are listen to the podcast and we'll just talk about something they want to talk about. Yeah, I'm down for that. Um. So yeah, thank you guys. We're not so running out of ideas. We're we not. Just, we're just we, we. Are we not running out of ideas? I don't. I don't think so. All right. There's so, so many things good. that we talk about. So. But yeah. So man, we appreciate you guys. Uh, if you like the show, go ahead and stop by iTunes and drop us a a rating and uh, maybe leave a review that might help uh, other people find out about the show. If it's been a benefit to you, if not, totally understand. Not even heard about it because. <laughs> quality of production here is pretty low whatever <laughs> you're gonna come back next week you know you know they will so all so, right so join us then we'll look at this bible maybe talk a little bit about, about mongolia mongolia so join us for the next episode <laughs> they do like guttural singing oh really yeah it's oh, like okay. a thing like throat singing. i thought i, I heard it it, it thought... was pretty impressive <laughs> i can't mimic it at all yeah. it's like uh, it's weird <laughs> Not at all like that. It doesn't sound like that. (laughs) We'll find a sample for next week. All right. We'll be back next week for the next episode of the Pastor Discussions podcast, your weekly conversation on doctrine, faith, and the Christian life.